Alright guys, welcome back to another Fusion 360 tutorial. I hope you're all doing well. And it's been a while since I've done one of these, but I do have plans to do a lot more tutorials in the near future. So stay tuned if you're interested in those. What I'm going to be doing today is showing you how you can slice and 3D print now directly from Fusion 360. And this is really, really awesome and something I've been waiting for for a while. This particular feature was released around three or four months ago and I've held off on making a video on it just to kind of iron out any bugs and see the overall response of it and if it was worth making one. And what I'm going to do is show you how to slice, uh, export the G code, and then I'm going to show you what the actual print turned out like at the end of the video. So what I've got here is a um, GT2 timing pulley that I designed for one of my recent projects. It's a really simple model and it's all we're going to need for this tutorial. Let's just say you're in the same position as I am, you've got a model, you're happy with it. Uh, what, what you want to do is change workspace, right? So we're currently in the design workspace. Um, what we want to do is change to the manufacturing workspace. So we're going to come up to the top left here, we're going to click and choose manufacture. Now, notice on the top here we've got a bunch of different tabs, right? We've got milling, turning, additive, probing, and fabrication. 3D printing is an additive type of manufacturing, so we want to select that. And once you select additive, you get a bunch of new different tools available to you here. And I love the way that they've done this in Fusion 360. It's, it's really intuitive and follows a step-by-step process, which you'll see in a second. So the first thing you want to do is set up a new machine. So we're going to go to set up here and there's going to be a menu that pops up on the right. And notice that the operation type here is set to milling. Now we're not milling, what we want to do is 3D print. So we're going to click that drop down and select additive and that'll change that for us. And notice we've also got a checkbox here that says automatic arrangement. This basically means if you've got automatic checked, it'll place your component by default in the center of the build plate. Uh, but I'll show you a bit more on that in the next step of the video. Next important thing, we need to set up a machine. And notice there's a button here that says select. So we're going to click that. Now this is important. So this particular library here has a lot of presets for some of the most popular 3D printers. Here you've got the Anet A8 in there. There's a Creality's in there. The Prusas are in there. Lots and lots of different printers. Uh, what we're going to do is go and select Prusa i3 Mark 3S in my particular case. Because that's what I'm going to test it with. So I'm going to click on that machine. And if you can't quite find what you're looking for, um, notice that if you go to filters here, there are capabilities to filter between. So if you're looking for milling, you can click milling and it'll only show you the milling tools. In this case, we only want additive. And you can see there's a bunch of different printers in there. But as I said, we're going to select Prusa i3 Mark 3S and click select. Notice what we've got here is a build plate, much like you'd see in something like Prusa Slicer. Um, you can see the dimensions of the printer and it basically gives you the volume in which you're allowed to place all your components. So what we're going to do now is just click OK and notice that we've got arrangement checked here as automatic. And watch what happens. If we hit OK, you can see it places our part directly in the center of our build plate. If for whatever reason you didn't check the box and let's say your component is floating around somewhere. So if we click move here in the top left, uh, let's say your component is over here somewhere. The, the menu gives us options um, to place that in the right spot, right? So we can come here, place parts on platform. There's a button for it. So we click that, we select our part, arrange, click the tick, and that'll place it in the center. So we hit okay, and there we go. So that's how you get your part flush with the surface of the build plate, which is pretty much step one, right? Problem one solved. But notice, notice what I said earlier, that the menu at the top here is kind of in a step-by-step -step process. So we've got the move tool, um, we can, place the parts on the platform, we've done that, we're ready for the next step. So the next step is the next one over, which is our um, print settings. So if we click the print settings button, notice we get this new menu that pops up and we've got a bunch of presets in here again. Um, we're actually gonna define our own based on a preset, which is what you usually do anyway. So I'm gonna select PLA 1.75 mil with a layer height of 0.2 mil. So we're just gonna select that for now. And notice here as well, you can import your own settings, you can save settings, much like you get in, in Proof of Slicer or something like that. So we're gonna hit um, PLA 1.75, hit select, and now that's gonna use that setting. But what we're gonna do now is modify those a bit. So now that we've select our material, we wanna to go to Print Setting Editor, which is the next button over. And this gives us a bunch more in-depth settings right that we can play around with so in the basic here we've got 
um, our standard settings. We've got our layer height. In this case, I'm going to stick with 0.2 millimeters. Depending on which machine you've selected, you'll know your limits in, in regards to layer height. So you can choose that however you want. I'm going to stick with 0.2. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, notice we've got other settings as well. We can select our infill density, but I'm not going to worry about that here. There's another step for that later on. If we go to extruder, you can see we can set the temperatures. So our bed temperature, 60 degrees for PLA. And I actually like the extruder to be uh, 215. or well, not 2000. 215, that, um, that works best for me. So we're going to change that. You can change your retraction here, your retraction speed, which is really nicely packaged up. And once you're familiar with it, it's so easy to work with. So if we go to layer, more settings in here if you really want to play around with them. You've got rapid Z lift as well. Lots of cool stuff. Infill. We're all right with that. Skirt brim, this is an interesting one. So one of the cool things about Prusa Slicer is it sets up the skirt and the brim for you by default. Um, if we were to currently export this, what we'd end up with is a brim that would be touching the print. And we don't want to do that. What we want is a skirt instead. And the objective of using the skirt is to essentially clean the nozzle and prime it before the print starts. So in order to do a proper skirt with a distance from the print, we're going to change skirt and brim distance here to five and we'll see that in a second. So raft, again, you can play around with those supports. There's so many different settings here to play with, but that's all we're gonna do for now, and I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna hit okay. I notice you can rename it at the top as well, if you wanna, I'm just gonna hit okay. So we've just set up our print settings. So if we go back through the menu, we switch to the manufacturer workspace, we moved our component into place or arranged it into place, however you wanted to do it. We've placed it on the platform. We've selected our default print settings. We modified our print settings for this particular print. Next step, define the infill. So we click this one. We can select our infill pattern. So we can go for star, honeycomb, flower, squares. I'm gonna go for honeycomb for this particular one. And I'm gonna select an infill density of 50%. Just for an example and notice again you've got a few other settings in there that you can change if you want to in this case i'm just going to hit okay and the next setting across is supports now this is the only real disappointing thing about this um, tool at the moment but as i said it is early days i'm sure these features are going to come in the near future but all you get really is support all you can do is enable or disable at least to my knowledge um, there's nothing in here yet that can play around with this Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure there isn't. So yeah, all you can do is enable or disable. You can't do anything cool like you can in Prusa Slicer, for example, where you can use support enforcers and support blockers, create your own custom supports and save a lot of print time, essentially. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna disable supports here because this particular print doesn't require it. It can be printed um, in place. So I'm just gonna hit okay. That's basically it. That's our settings defined. And remember, use the menu as a guide. You know, it's, it's taking you through step by step what you need to do. And the next thing we need to do is slice. Um, in Fusion 360, slicing is known as simulating. So if we go up to actions here, notice there's an option in there called simulate additive tool path. So we're gonna click that and you'll see something kind of familiar here. You get a little arrow that you can drag up and down. But first we need to define a few things. We need to select our mode and the animation. So this actually lets you watch the animation of how the print would go, which is pretty cool. And to do this, to slice or to simulate, we just hit this calculate button here and you'll notice there's a little uh, percentage bar in the bottom right. It'll show you the progress of that. It's not that fast. So if you've got a complex model, it might take a little while. But you can see we've actually sliced that and we can use the arrow and pull it up and down like you normally would in some other software. Or we can actually hit play here and watch it. I notice there we've got the skirt around the edge, again, which will prime our nozzle for us before it starts the print. So it's actually pretty cool to watch it like that. It's just quite, no, it's kind of satisfying, I guess. So I'm gonna pause that, and I'm gonna drag this to the top and hit close. And you can always go back into there at any moment. So if we wanna just go back, we can do simulate additive toolpath, which is this big symbol. So you can just click that and you can look at it again. And remember, if you go and change any settings, you need to re-simulate your path to update it. So what we're going to do next is generate the G-code. And this requires you to go and download something. I'm going to show you how to do that, so don't worry about it. So there's this button here called Post Process. Generating G-code or exporting G-code in something like Prusa Slicer, uh, you just click Export G-code and it does it for you. But in this case, we've got to define our processor and tell it what machine this is going to be used for. So if we click post-process, this little menu pops up here. You're going to have to go and download something 
to set this up. So notice there's a little um, blue link at the bottom here that says search for posts in our post library. So if you click that link, it'll take you to this website and you've got a bunch of different posts available here in this post library. The reason you have to go and do this is because Fusion 360 is such a, a broad tool and it's available for so many different machines and different processors that you've got to define these things to use them. It's very similar for setting this up for milling and on all those other kind of manufacturing techniques. Remember, we're using the Prusa here. So I'm just going to search Prusa. And notice it gives us that processor there. So all we've got to do is click download. And notice it'll download a file here called Prusa.cps. Now, keep that file safe because we're going to need it. So if we go back to Fusion 360, you can see here that our um, configuration folder is this file path here. So you're going to want to copy that file path wherever yours is. If we go to that actual folder, so you can see in our downloads file, we've got prusa.cps. So you'd want to copy that. Go to that file path that we just copied and you can see I've already got it in there. So I've got in there prusa.cps. Um, your file path might be slightly different. It might have a few extra processes in there. Don't worry about it. Just paste the .cps file in and then when you come back to Fusion 360 it, it probably won't update straight away so just hit cancel come to actions post process and then you should be able to select the Prusa machine in this drop down here and like I said you might have a bunch of other uh, machines in there or processors just look for the Prusa one select it and that's all you need to do what that's doing is it's just telling Fusion 360 this G code is going to be executed on this Prusa machine. And all that does is let Fusion 360 know how it needs to package up that G code to be read most efficiently by the Prusa Mark 3S or whatever printer you're using. From here, we just export the G code. And posting, this post button, is the same as export G code in another platform. So this is where we define the name. So I'm just going to call this um, tutorial and when I post this it's going to be called tutorial.gcode so I'm going to hit post it's going to ask me for a location to post it to I'm going to put it in my downloads folder and if I go back to my Windows Explorer back to downloads you can see what I've got there is tutorial.gcode so what I'm going to do now is actually try and take that G code place it on the SD card and try and print it on my Prusa Mark 3s so let's have a look how that goes All right, so as you can see, that went fairly well. Um, it's really, really awesome to just be able to go from the design workspace to the manufacturer workspace and get all that done in the same environment. You know, that's just, it's, it's awesome because when you do a lot of designing and you're having to export all your components from one place to another as an STL and then import them as an STL and slice them, it's just, it, it's, see, it is an unnecessary step, right? When you think about it, it's just an unnecessary thing to do. So to have that now integrated into Fusion 360, I think it's very, very powerful. And as I said, it is early days. They are quite a way behind some of the features you'd see in other software platforms. But this is Autodesk we're talking about, and I have no doubt at all that they'll catch up. I mean, the way Fusion 360 has improved and developed over the last couple of years alone, I think we're going to see some awesome stuff here. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And I'll be the first to let you know with a tutorial when they release those things. I think when you're able to 3D print directly from the design workspace, you can factor in a lot of things there, like, you know, what is that part used for? Does it need to be strong? And so many other cool things that can consider the purpose of the part, not just it's a part, right? And I think the whole generative design process, that whole direction that Fusion's going in, uh, we could see a lot of cool things like that, where maybe it's recommending print settings for you based on the job of the part. And that would be something really, really cool. And I'd love to see that in place. So well, that's it for this video. As always, I hope you learned something. I hope you found it useful. If you're a beginner and you wanna learn how to use Fusion 360 from scratch, I have a course available on my website. 
I'll leave a link below, so check that out if you're interested. Other than that, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.